Hi, my name's Gavin Bottrell. My website's hickorygolf.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turn this into this. This is the head I'm going to make the shaft for. It's a left-handed mashy, George Nickel hand, probably a late 1920s club. And the most important, well, there's two tools really that you need to do this. One is something that I think is called an archer's rest. And this is a big long piece of wood with a V-shape cut out of it with a stop at the end. The other thing is a very sharp, small hand plane, like this. So I'm just going to chop about 10 inches off this end of the uh, lath, as it's called. I've cut this lath to about 40 inches, and also what I've just done is, with a vernier, I've just checked what the width of it is at um, so both ends, really. So that's, well, 18.98, call it 19 millimetres at one end, and down at this end it's a shade over 20. So what you're aiming to do is to have something about 20 at the grip end, and at the minute, I mean, in fact, here's the, here's the head that it's got to go into. Let me just put the vernier on that and see what that is. Sixteen point three eight. So obviously there's going to be a taper along it. I made my first shaft in about 2007. We're now in 2021. Um, and I've experimented with different ways of making shafts. I tried for a long time to try and make one on my lathe there, but after several years I concluded that actually this technique is perhaps the simplest, although it does take a little bit of time and a bit more manual uh, judging and skill. So I've just had a quick check that my plane is nice and sharp. It's not absolutely the best I've ever had it, but um, it's taking off pieces quite easily. And basically, the whole thing is, is you start with a four-sided lath, and you then, at each corner... Now I'm trying to do this, obviously, one-handed whilst holding the camera. I haven't got a, uh, this camera mounted on a tripod or anything. Um, you flatten each corner. Now what you've got to look out for is which way the grain is running through the wood. And it will become quite obvious when you practically do this. When you're planing against the wood, it will be a lot harder and it'll, the plane will judder and tear. But if you're obviously planing with the grain, it's nice and smooth. And what you'll find is, unless you've got a very straight piece of wood the, there will be portions of the shaft where you are planing with and against the grain. Now in uh, the, the early days of club making what it is documented is that shafts, laths were cut by splitting wood with an ads. that's A-D-Y-Z-E -E, I think you spell it where you're getting the piece of timber and then you're effectively putting um, a chisel-like point at the end of the wood and hitting it with a heavy mallet or hammer. And so the wood is always splitting down the length of the grain. Now, modern timber is generally uh, cut with a, a saw in a very automated operation. And so there's not a lot of care taken to ensure that the wood is being split along its uh, grain lines. And so when you, when you come to actually making a shaft, as I say, you're going to get portions where you're going with the grain and somewhere you're going uh, against the grain. And that's really where it comes to having a bit of experience 
to know what you're doing. And what you do is, so you, you're, you're going to plane each corner and you're not going to really use any measuring techniques here. Um, you're then going to turn it in the rest and you're going to plane a bit more and just keep on going. Now I've only done a couple of strokes there on each corner but really it's down to your eye and how you see the thing sitting in the rest that means you come to judge which sides need a bit more planing than the other. So I'm going to go at this uh, lath now and um, probably uh, do the next piece of uh, footage in maybe 10 minutes time. So I've just been planing this for probably three, four minutes actually. Um, just mainly down this end, trying to smooth off the four corners. It's nowhere not, well, it's not circular yet. And what I'm looking for is how well it overall sits on, on the lath, because then that'll give me an idea whether um, it's actually being fashioned so that it's straighter. Uh, so for example whether there's a high spot along the, the shaft. So at the minute I can feel there's probably a, a bit of a high spot here. So I've just got to watch that, that I don't take off um, too much material, particularly from the other side. So I've got to take off a bit of material here. And, and very much this operation is you, you sort of do it by lifting up the, the lath by certainly your left hand if you're right-handed, and then turning it like this. And as long as you're taking small slivers of wood off, really, um, it, it sort of magically turns out pretty straight by itself. It's, um, well, I don't think I've just been lucky. Um, it's it's uh, something that you just have to practice a bit and go quite slowly at first. So I'm gonna continue now. I just thought I'd reset the camera so you can actually see me um, doing the thing in operation <laughs> uh, to prove that this is what I'm actually doing. As I've said on my other videos, I actually live quite close to a road um, that's near and my garage is next to the road. So apologies if you hear a bit of traffic noise in the background. Um, <laughs> It does get a little bit um, in the way of uh, making videos for YouTube, but uh, having the road there means that I can happily make as much noise as I like without annoying any neighbours. So I'm just looking here by eye for high and low spots. So I can see a portion just there that the plane hasn't got to yet, as it were. So I'll just that a bit more on that spot. So I'm just turning it with my left hand and uh, obviously doing the plane with my right. One thing I should have said earlier, the thing you really need, um, and I've learnt this through bitter experience, is a good set of gloves when it comes to this. Otherwise, you can um, wind up with a, a blister on your hand very, very quickly. Okay, so I've probably got that half of the shaft now relatively circular. I'm not looking for anything too perfect at this stage, just trying to get the overall shape. And now I'm just going to push this down the rest uh, and concentrate on the sort of next section up. And I can see I'm just about to go against the grain here. So I'm just going to be a bit careful, make sure I don't tear out a lot of the wood if I'm planing against it. 
sometimes what you have to do is you have to reverse the piece so then you're planing with it. You can see the corner of my uh, uh, one of my machines has, has got into shot. <laughs> there we are. It's a little bit. Pause the video. So we're now a few minutes on and you can see that this end of the lath is still very much square. So for about 15 inches. And then it's transitioning into something that's relatively circular. We're not looking for anything too accurate at this stage. Just trying to get a nice straight piece, hopefully all round eventually. So I've just reversed the piece in the rest. So this bit here is still quite square. And what I've got to make sure is that the circular bit now is keeping in contact with the rest down at this end of the shaft. Otherwise, I'm gonna sort of inflict a bow into its overall shape. I've only got a little bit to go here where I've not actually, the plane hasn't touched it so um, just see if I can do that one-handed a bit just to show how easy it is. My philosophy in quite a few things is if you do things slowly enough um, generally you won't make too many unrecoverable errors and it's very much a case of taking things slowly when you're doing this job. Take a little bit off, have a look at it, have a think. Okay, so I can see that there's unplaned wood there, but the rest of the surface, tiny bit there. Okay, so I'm just taking this bit now extra slowly to make sure I don't do something silly and take uh, too much off. got a still tiny amount here that the plane hasn't touched. I haven't measured the diameter of the shaft yet. Um, by eye I would say it's round about 20 mil, something like that. But what you've got to ensure from now on to make sure your, your shaft is nice and straight at the end is that it Whenever you're planing, you've got to sit it down into the rest. Keep one hand here, rotate it very slightly with the pressure of the, the fingers here, back and forward, and just take little slivers off, minute slivers. Still got this tiny bit here that's uh, not being touched by the plane. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the diameters just to get a feel whether I'm how close I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the end product. Um, in the end, I want one end. What was it about 16 and a half millimeters, and one end 19 and a half, something like that. Thank you. 
I've been working on this shaft probably for about 20 minutes now, 25 minutes. And one thing you can see is that if I just rotate it with my hand pressure in the rest, it stays more or less in there, meaning it must be fairly straight. From now on, it's a case of taking things again, slowly, uh, tapering to one end. You can see down at this end, I've got this flat spot here. Now, I actually haven't decided even yet which end's going to be the handle end, so the thicker end, and which is going to be the taper. But as that's got a flat there, it could be mm, natural that that end might turn out to be the tapered end going into the head. I'll have to have a look at the uh, grain as well and just check uh, if there's any obvious things that are pointing to one end being the handle and one being the head. So now I'm going to put a taper on the end and I do it using my trusty sanding belt machine here. So this is how the end of the shaft looks after its first coarse sanding. I'm just doing this all by eye really. Uh, I've got a little step there in the shaft and I'm just holding it tight against my body and rotating it against the sanding belt. So I've just offered the head up to that first sanding um, operation just to see basically whether I'm in the ballpark of getting it to fit and I need to take a bit more material off and um, take it easy. So I've turned down this uh, taper on the end of the shaft on my sanding belt and you can see it's not just quite square at the uh, edge there. So I'm just going to take this off and now use a hand file to get a good close finish on the shoulder. But you can see that the shaft is mm, at least a millimetre in I think all, all sides uh, too big. But um, that's exactly what we want uh, at the minute. We want to have extra material to play with. So I've now got the head, or rather the shoulder here, nice and square, so there's no gaps between the wood and the very end of the hosel. The thing I'm going to do now is to very much again by eye, lay the shaft down and make sure, yeah, it's reasonably straight. Okay, so what I am actually going to do is look at the end grain here. Now we're trying to determine which way effectively the shaft is going to sit in the uh, final product, as it were. You want the end grain going east west and also you need to look at the uh, the V's in the in the grain um, because you want ideally the V's to be on the back side of the shaft, not on the top side. And that takes a bit of experience just to be able to determine all that. Um, if you want a bit more explanation of that there was a little book called Collecting Antique Golf Clubs uh, written by um, a person whose name <laughs> unfortunately escapes me but a uh, tiny little book published in the late 1970s and that has a very good explanation about the way that a shaft is fitted. I should probably explain my last statements a little bit more. don't think I did it uh, too well. So, when you're looking down at the shaft, you want the V's of the grain pointing 
towards the head on the top side of the shaft and away from the head on the bottom side of the shaft. So the last thing I did yesterday when I was making this video was to glue the head onto the shaft using some epoxy glue. I usually put some clear sticky tape around the hose so it doesn't come out of the holes and that it doesn't seep out from the join here. I then rest the club that way up so that the epoxy runs down and seals all around. I've also just trimmed the length of this club to about 38 inches. The final club is probably going to work out about 37 and a quarter inches measuring from the heel here in a straight down line down the middle to the end of the shaft. But I'm not going to measure it up uh, to its exact length just yet. The reasons being that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the hand plane and I'm going to work predominantly this section of the shaft to a slimmer diameter and I'm going to be feeling it periodically for the flex and uh, just how whippy the shaft is turning out and also periodically I'm going to put it onto my uh, swing weight scale which is here I use a mechanical swing weight scale because if you're taking a lot of material off the shaft it is going to affect the swing weight so this is where again as I was advocating yesterday take things slowly take a little bit of material off the shaft see how it feels see what the swing weight is but you've got to allow for also when you come to add a, a leather grip and if it's a quite a thick grip that will also affect the swing weight. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little hand plane here and you can see I've just got probably about a millimetre of a shoulder here of the shaft and I'm just going to take that down very carefully in very careful strokes so that the shaft is then flush with the diameter of the hosel. So I've done quite a lot around the hosel but it's not quite flush yet so I'm just going to show a little bit uh, what that's like doing it in real time. So I'm just positioning the edge of the, the blade right on the edge of the, the step there and then just gently pushing it away from me. Very, very smooth strokes. Paying attention to where the grain of the shaft might be turning against me because then you've got more chance of it ripping as you push away. What also helps is if you turn the plane at an angle, it shallows the, the cutting blade even more. So it's taking off an, either, an even finer strip of material. So just making sure it's caught the edge there. Taking care not to take uh, too many lumps out of the, uh, the metal head. You don't want to do that, certainly. One thing I've realised over the years in working with wood is often your fingertips will tell you more than your eyes can see. One thing I definitely need to do now is take this sellotape off so I can ensure I get a uh, nice flush join. I 
I've now planed the end of this shaft so it's all nice and flush with the end of the hosel. So what I'm going to do now is take some more material off this section of the shaft, working my way up. And it's important that you do this with the club resting uh, in the, uh, the V of the archer's rest so that you're not inducing any, um, uh, basically, uh, bend or uh, warp to the shaft so that you're keeping it all nice and straight. So I've been working on this shaft for quite a while now and I just want to show the difference in the diameters still. So that's coming in at 16.1 on the raw shaft and that's 13.7. So there's quite a lot of material still to come off this raw shaft. But what you must do is you must take this very uh, slowly in terms of taking material off because different woods, be they hickory or ash, and sometimes I work with ash, but this is actually hickory, they behave very differently when you get to the point where you're just um, on the point of getting some nice life in the shaft. I mean, this shaft at the minute, uh, when I waggle it in my hands, is still very lifeless. It's like uh, swinging a, a broom handle. Um, there's hardly any give in it at all. But what I'm saying is you must take it and as you narrow down the waist of the shaft here to give a nice bit of flex in it, you must take it very, very slowly because it's very easy to take too much off and then suddenly you've got a shaft which is far too whippy for what you want. So let's see what sort of diameters we're getting on this shaft now. So just above the hosel, 16.7. And then I like to take a point about five to six inches above that as my narrowest point, I'm getting about 14.8. So not that much more to come off this shaft. It's starting to feel quite uh, a bit more life in it when I waggle it in my hands, but it's not there yet. So if I turn this shaft in the rest, it actually hugs the bottom of the rest very well. It's not bouncing around, meaning that it's nice and true. So I'm just going to take my vernier and measure up about four or five inches, well, five inches from the edge. It's about there, and that's coming out at 14.9 millimeters. So now I'm going to get some quite coarse sandpaper, about 100 grade, and give it a rub down all over. So I've rubbed down the shaft um, to give it a really nice smooth feel. Uh, the sandpaper I was using was actually 120 grit. Um, and now what I'm going to do is to uh, use some bitumen which I've got a little bit here on the end of a screwdriver and this is something uh, that I worked out a few years ago and it, there's, people have different methods um, some people just use a stain but what I like to do is use a little bit of bitumen and a little bit of white spirits um, so that it melts and basically put that all over the shaft and what that's going to do is seal and go into the deeper parts and bring out the grain so I will come back once I've done that okay so I've done my basic uh, bit of bitumen and white spirit uh, most of the way up the, sh the shaft. I've not done this bit. Um, I tend to leave a little bit here just that will go under the handle and then I haven't also decided exactly how long this club's going to be at the minute so this is a bit over length at the minute. Um, I've put it on the swing weight scale it came out um, about E2 which is a bit too heavy um, for what most people like. Modern clubs are about D2 
so we'll see where this ends up but I just thought I'd give you a few close-ups of this is what the grain is looking like now that I've um, basically put some bitumen into it and what I was saying earlier in an earlier clip was you want the V's so here you can see a V of the grain you want that on the top side as it were of the shaft and similarly if you were to turn it over you want the V's you can see three there on the back side running towards the handle and it, it uh, the book um, I was referring to in an earlier segment is by Alec Watt he wrote a book called Collecting Antique Golf Clubs in the late 70s and Alec was from a uh, I think he was a third or fourth generation uh, club makers and um, he also wrote a very good later book called Tales from a Club Maker's Shop I think it was which is a very interesting read uh, to give you a little bit more insights what he says is <clears throat> they actually rather than used pure bitumen as I'm doing here they had a, a jar with uh, tar in it which is effectively bitumen and then he said they put rusty nails in it as well and they put vinegar uh, I think was the recipe that they used to make their stain but people uh, have come up with different ideas I mean some people just use a, a proprietary oil-based stain right out the can um, I've tried that myself but um, this is my favorite uh, technique personally and similarly when it comes to putting on a top coat some people use um, a modern varnish, uh, some people use shellac, um, I personally use my own recipe of varnish um, that uh, I keep quite closely guarded because it works well. So whilst this uh, um, bitumen mix is drying on the, this portion of the shaft, I'm just tacking on a leather grip and I, I, I'm doing that by means of uh, some very um, quick double-sided sticky tape. And the point of this is I'm going to put this club on my swing skates, swing weight scale in a moment. And I want to see effectively what it's coming out at. So I just tack that on, I've tacked it on at the other end, tack it on at that end. You can see it's just a bit loose really, but it's... It's quite heavy, thick leather, so it does have quite a, a bit of weight to it. And I've not done it right at the end as well. So if I just go over to my swing weight scale and see where this club is coming out at, I would expect it to be... Okay, so... It's actually coming out at D, D7, which is a little bit too heavy. But that's exactly what I was hoping for in a way, because I know that this club is a little bit too long. So I'm going to measure the length of it from the tip here down to the tip of the, the shaft and um, generally, well, um, see uh, how much to take off. And I might be taking off perhaps a half inch at a time, putting it back on the scale, seeing where it comes out. Okay, so I've chopped a little bit off the length of this club and I'm just going to measure it up now for length. And so I'll put that on the ruler and we can see that the centre is coming out there at 37 and a quarter inches, which is what I like for mashies. I said earlier that some people like them a little bit shorter, um, some a little bit longer, but that I feel is uh, will suit most players. So 37 and a quarter inches. Let's go and put it on the swing weight scale. And lo and behold, it's balancing at D2, which is absolutely on the button. So as a final touch, I've just chamfered over the edge of this shaft. Some people like quite domed 
uh, ends of the shafts. Um, I personally like it mostly flat, I would say, with just a corner uh, chamfer. Um, I feel that works well. And now I'm just going to take my little bit of um, bitumen and a little bit of spirit. And I'm just going to do that there and colour it all over. And I'll just take a rag to that in a second and make sure it's nice and even. One thing I can also do whilst the uh, bitumen on the shaft is, is drying is put a rivet or pin in the hosel. And that's currently filled with hardened epoxy glue at the minute. So I'm just going to drill through that hole and I like to use a little bit of brass bar. Um, some people use steel, some people use aluminium, but um, I found brass uh, works very well. So I've just put the brass pin in the hosel and uh, given it uh, a smoothing off with some fine sandpaper and I'll give it a final polish. But what I'm going to do now is put the club up to dry before I give it uh, several coats of varnish and then I'll um, post some final pictures of it. Well it's a few days since I started this shaft and I'm considering it finished now so I just thought I'd do a little bit more video just to show you what it looks like close up now it's finished. Thanks for watching if you want to contact me, my email is info at timewarpgolf.com. Bye.